We literally cannot say it enough. WNBA star Brittany Griner is home. Her release from a Russian prison is one of those stories we just can't stop smiling about, even as questions remain over her future, now that she's known for a lot more than dunks on the court. So, one thing is for sure. No matter how things pan out and no matter where her story takes us, she's got a mountain of support behind her. She's on the ground. Stop it. Yep, she's on the ground. She's safe. She's on a plane. She's on her way home. Today is just a happy day for me and my family, so um, I'm going to smile right now. <laughs> um, thank you. Brittany Griner was finally on her way home. I got to know her incredible wife. We were together in the Oval Office, her wife and I. We heard Brittany's voice on the phone when she was freed. And we addressed the nation together. When we did that, Brittany's wife said, quote, today, my family is whole. Biden with those Ray-Bans. Joining me now is the person instrumental in Griner's transition home, Brittany Griner's agent, Lindsay Kagawa Kolas. Uh, thank you for being here, Ms. Kagawa Kolas. Uh, let's talk about it. So we know a little bit about uh, Brittany's first couple days home. She got a haircut. Um, she had cut her locks due to the low temperatures in prison she stayed in, so she shaped that up. She had a Dr. Pepper and some San Antonio barbecue. What else can you tell us about her first day's home? Hey, Joy, thanks for having me. Um, I mean, I guess a lot. I want to leave a lot for also for Brittany to tell everybody about. Um, look, when we when we saw her take those first steps onto American soil, it's it's actually hard to describe the feeling. Um, you know, it was joyous and it, it was rewarding and that sparkle was still there, right? The first hug, it's like it's, you're waiting 10 months for that hug and seeing her and Sherelle embrace. Um, it was the fulfillment of a promise that we made where, we, you know, we told Sherelle, we are going to get her home. And we made that promise and we did it, Joe. And we're so excited. So her day's been filled um, with what she wants to do, which is really important. And she's very, very appreciative of all the resources that the U.S. government has been able to provide. Um, you know, their reemergent uh, reintegration program is really, really robust. And she's taking her time to take advantage of those resources, you know, have some barbecue, play a little basketball um, and see her family and catch up on a lot of lost time. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that, you know, what Brittany Griner was known for before was, you know, being the first woman in the WNBA to do two dunks in a game, you know, for obviously her incredible skills on the court. Um, but now her name is synonymous with her trauma in a lot of ways. So I think, you know, a lot of people are not, you know, expecting her to push herself to get back on the court. Um, but those questions still are out there. There are a lot of her fans that are wondering when they'll see her back on the court. Is that something that she's even thinking about right now. She's got so many options, um, but one of them is to actually get sleep and rest. <laughs> Just as you said, hang out with her family and drink Dr. Pepper. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and have barbecue and, and sample all the, the fare that San Antonio has to offer. And also last night when we FaceTimed, she was telling me about how she was walking around base and taking pictures with people. You know, Brittany is the daughter of a veteran. She's the daughter of a former law enforcement agent. And, you know, she loves America. And so I think that, you know, for everybody who's just gotten to know her, maybe through this trauma or through, you know, all the divisive rhetoric, now they're paying attention and they're going to get to know the woman that we know. And Brittany Griner is a really special person who has been a pioneer almost by accident. You know, Brittany Griner has never asked to be famous. All she's ever done is be herself. And in doing that, she gives other people permission to be themselves too. And that is incredibly powerful. You could not find a better person to give a platform like this to. And the other thing that she talked to me about last night and the night before that and the night before that was her commitment to getting other Americans home. She is really yeah. passionate about making sure that the invisible become visible. And she's always been that way, always been that way. And here she is again through this process. And this is now her community. And she is committed to getting Paul Whelan home. She's committed to getting the other Americans home. And I think she's got a pretty good partner in an administration that has shown they're willing to do really hard things. And she's yeah. there to be a partner in doing that.
Oh, and, and a great partner in Shirelle. I mean, I don't think there could have been a, a fiercer advocate um, right. and a fiercer spouse uh, that was out there fighting constantly, making sure no one forgot uh, that Brittany um, was in captivity and, uh, and fighting for her liberation. So uh, they can enjoy themselves. Hopefully they can make a second honeymoon of it. And just, listen, we right. all would love to be we having some barbecue. We talked about vacation, too. Yeah, exactly. great timing, right? What great timing, timing to celebrate love right? And, and the example to everyone and the power in that. So we're so proud of Sherelle. We're so thankful for her trust. And we're thankful to the whole team. It really took a huge, huge coalition of people. And thank you, Joy, for keeping this visible and top of the news for us. Thank you it very was, much. It was an absolute honor. And uh, listen, if y'all have not checked out the WNBA, if this doesn't make you a fan, I don't even know what to tell you, because it is also a fantastic league. Lindsay Kagawa-Kolas, thank you so much for joining us tonight.